Hello guys, this is Blue Heart with Mog Nation. I'm going to be casting a game from our Mog Nation Smite League. And this game is going to be Red 5 versus the League of Gentlemen. And this is a week one game. So on the Red 5, we're going to have Bantha Bolt on Cupid, Pink 1942 on Alquam, and Velkar 569 on Hades. And let's go ahead and go ahead and look at the League of Gentlemen here. We are going to have Sarastro playing uh, Zongkui, Seraphin playing Hell, and Screamin' Hell playing Shibalonke. So just off the bat, that we can let's take a look at the bands here. So uh, the Red Five band Anubis. And Ares from uh, from the League of Gentlemen, and the League of Gentlemen band Zeus and uh, Fenrir from Red Five. Um, trying to follow with some of these bands, but uh, honestly, the bands on both teams don't make a lot of sense. I know Sarastro sometimes plays Anubis. Um, I don't really see uh, anyone on the League of Gentlemen play Ares very often and on the other side uh, Fenrir and Zeus not exactly understanding that band those bands as well but anyway let's go ahead and remove the bands and what do you say we get this match underway all right so as the game starts here we're gonna be looking at their builds can kinda get an idea of what direction they're going screaming hell on Shibalanki starting off with a tier 2 heart seeker so which is very smart with a hunter that's the way I built uh, Artemis in our league game and uh, really you you build those early heart seeker stacks stacks it makes your your mid game a lot stronger as a hunter but it makes your early game not as strong as going the standard uh, death toll uh, the other two took uh, both of their abilities their actives and tier 1 boots, and it looks like Sarastro got a lot of mana pots, which is good because Zonkui is kind of mana heavy. We got something interesting here. Uh, typically, you don't see the team going left jungle. So it looks like the uh, League of Gentlemen is going for an invade here. They're waiting until about... That would have waited a little longer, but it looks like he's going ahead and trying to get a little poke. Screams is going forward. Uh, without his team. Maybe he's just trying to bait this out. Maybe he's trying to make him think that he's alone and just kind of lead them into the rest of his team. I think that's what's happening there. But as you can see, the uh, Red 5 team is not falling for the bait quite yet. And they're waiting for a timely engage here. After the, uh, the team of Red 5 does engage on the blue buff, they do go ahead and go in and try and get the poke off. Unfortunately, they didn't really go in with a, a lot of force, so the uh, Red 5 team was able to pick up that blue buff and get out safely. Velkar seeing a lot of poke on Hades. He will be able to get out safely, possibly. Screams does get double poked by the uh, Alquonk Squall, and then he gets a heart bomb on him by Cupid, but uh, is able to get out. Um, that was quite dangerous of Screams. And I'm surprised he didn't take more damage than he did. He probably had a health pot running. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and get this game underway. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to assisted camera angle. And uh, give me one second here. All right, so the team of League of Gentlemen did take a lot of poke in that engage. It kind of had the negative effect on them than they wanted. Uh, if you're looking at the team of Red 5, they are all pretty much full health. Where the team of League of Gentlemen is uh, really poke down but as their health pots do tick off here they are gain regaining some health and Sarastro he is overextended a little bit he's taking a lot of damage from those ranged minions and the tornado from pink is able to get its dot ticking on two different people of the League of Gentlemen very good uh, poke right there Sarastro taking damage from the rain min ranged minions and he is overextended it's going to be uh, 
kind of a precarious situation with a fully held red five team he is overextended again he doesn't get picked up by the squall are they going to be able to turn this into a kill they aren't really going forward to engage on that Uh, honestly, the Red 5 could have probably uh, gone forward and put a lot of damage. They, he does get the harp on Mr. Rostro. Does not get taken down yet. He dives the tower with his leap forward. Which is probably not the best move as he is taken down by the tower damage. Early in this, this early in the game, you really don't want to go in and take any hits from the tower. Because it can take off a quarter of your health per hit. Especially if you're a squishy cupid. Screams holding the middle lane. As the, uh, his two teammates, Seraph Seraphim and Sarastro, are coming back to lane to help him out. He's doing a good job of holding solo against two members of the Red 5 team. Bantha also uh, coming back into the game here. Let's see, who did that uh, kill go to? Uh, looks like it went to Screams, which is the a precise target or uh, player that you don't want that to go to. Uh, Fed Shibalanki is not something you want to deal with. Cupid taking a lot of poke from the Shibalanki poison. But, uh, and Velkar taking those ranged minions. Uh, is taking a little bit of damage from that. So we're looking at about, uh, three quarters health on both Cupid and Hades. Sarasra doing a great job on building up his stacks of his passive. Good clear there. And Pink coming back in. Uh, he is able to get the tornado on Seraphim. Not exactly. And the ult coming out from Al Kwong is able to just burst down to Hell. Now, Hell is a tricky character. Early on in the game, she is super squishy. And, uh, the key to killing a Hell is bursting her down. And an Al Kwong ult is the perfect burst to just annihilate that Hell, hell God. And, uh, the, the poison hitting two players of the Red 5 team. Cupid is low HP and having to stay back near his tower. Looks like Velkar was uh, doing a fake in, uh, engage right there. And changed his mind pretty quick. Cupid a little bit too far. Both Pink and Bantha Bolt get poked down by that poison yet again. It doesn't look like Screams has too many points in his poison as that poke really isn't doing the amount of damage that I thought it would be doing. Uh, that's usually one of the skills you want to level up earlier rather than his uh, his leap on his three because the, the poke from the poison does a lot of good good poke. So we look like uh, both teams kind of playing passive right now. Not really sure, just trying to get a feel for the other team. This is their first uh, league game, so they're just trying to get a feel for it. And uh, we have one kill on each team. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, experience and gold difference. It's pretty much negligible. Um, the XP difference <laughs> is literally four in favor of uh, Red 5 here. Oh, the engage going for Velkar. Perfect ultimate is able to get all three of them. Aquang follow up ultimate. And the Squall able to pick up two members of the League of Gentlemen. And a hell left to solo defend this tower against three members of the Red 5 team. She is going to just completely step away from that tower, uh, afraid of really getting nailed down by those those uh, Red 5 members. Could have probably stayed back a little bit, but it definitely, you know, playing safe is not a bad thing. So it looks like the um, members of the League of Gentlemen are coming back into lane here. Uh, looks like the golden XP difference has wildly swung in the favor of the League of Gentlemen with those two kills added to their repertoire. We're looking at a gold difference, still pretty negligible. It's only uh, 800 or so in favor of uh, Red 5. XP difference, however, is 1,458 in favor of Red 5, which will make a bigger difference than the gold early on. So looking at where those kills are going, it looks like two of those three kills on the red five are on pink, which is their one of their main carries, so it's definitely going to help them out in the long run. Pink, ooh, that nice poke with the poison. It is starting to hurt a little bit more. Pink not even building into boots or anything yet. He's trying to finish out his Rata to Hootie. Um, 
not exactly sure I would do that build, but uh, he really wants that early uh, mana regeneration and damage, I suppose. Radatsu Huri really not coming, becoming a powerful item until you get other items that have magical power. And Velkar going in for another ult initiate. Perfect follow-up ult with, with Ao Kuang. Able to pick up two more kills. And really that those initiations by the Hades, played by Velkar, are really setting up those perfect Ao Kuang ultimates. And uh, personally, I've played against a, uh, a Hades and Ao Kuang combo on 3v3 Joust. They synergize so well, you really don't want to go against a team that has both a Hades and Ao Kuang. The uh, Hades ultimate is enough to pin them in place and really allow Ao Kuang ult to, to hit without worrying about uh, having to line it up. Because if they're sitting still, they can't dodge it at all. And it's really easy to hit. Cupid getting poked down pretty heavy by screams. Healing up a little bit with those hearts. And we got Hell coming back into lane to, to heal up screams. And hopefully negate some of the poke he took from the minions right there. And the Cupid heart bomb. So we got Bantha Bolt. He is going back. Let's see what he's going to buy. It looks like he started out with an early golden bow, which uh, gives all his basic attacks basically an AoE. And then uh, that AoE does 50% of the original damage of the initial hit on the basic attack. Again, the, the poison poke going down on peak, pink. Screams really, uh, I've only seen him poke with his poison. I haven't really seen him use his uh, third ability to leap in the air and uh, kind of a follow-up poke on the poison to get that extra damage. It looks like we got uh, Screams going around to the damage buff. Uh, Pink is reacting to this. Maybe he's just trying to lead the other team into believing that he's going to try and defend that damage. But he doesn't really do anything. He just comes back into lane. Not exactly sure what he's doing. Now we got Zong Kui going over the damage buff. Maybe he's trying to see if Pink went over there. And uh, Pink just deciding to play it safe, not go out to the damage buff, and just pick up his own mana buff right here. And I'm assuming he is going to go back to lane. He did finish that Radith to Hootie and also picked up a tier 3 Spear of the Magus. So it gives him a lot of penetration. And uh, also an additional 40 magical power, which makes his Radith to Hootie even more powerful early on. And it looks like we got a perfect laid Squall. To follow up on that damage of Sarastro, but Hell able, able to negate that damage uh, with her heal pretty successfully, but he is still poked below half health. And we got this red 5 team, pretty much full health. Let's see, Velkar does have his ultimate. In fact, every player on the red 5 team has their ultimate. Also, League of Gentlemen, every player on that team has their ultimate. But I won't be surprised to see an engage coming out by Hades. He is leaping in. His ult unfortunately misses all of the members of the League of Gentlemen. So they're just going to fall back there. Ooh, a nice Aquang ult. Hits Hell, not hitting anyone else. Screams, pops his ult, and is able to catch Aquang uh, off guard. Oh my goodness, uh, a perfectly laid ultimate by Cupid. Bantha Bolt, just blowing up both Shibalanki and Hell with that, that uh, pop on his ultimate. Uh, both, team kind, both teams kind of caught off guard. Pink on the uh, Red 5 team caught off guard, uh, was concentrating on landing his ultimate, and didn't see Shibalanki kind of coming forward on him. Looks like we got Sarastro engaging. He it does have to be careful, though, because he's engaging in two members of League of Gentlemen, even though they're not fully health. He is taking a lot of creep damage right here. A lot of creep damage. Then the Heart Bomb comes out, and he pops his ult. But he runs away, so all that damage from his ult is negated. Uh, basically, didn't didn't really uh, accomplish too much with that ult. I would have liked to seen him either follow that up or uh, or not pop his ult at all. But Cupid disengages smartly, and so uh, basically got a free ult out of Sarastro there. Sarastro able to heal up by uh, popping his two and an ultimate, an interesting ultimate by Al Kuang. Uh, I think he was trying to hit Hell and uh, Shibalanki, but really uh, just didn't have any way of keeping them there. Squall doing heavy damage almost brought Screams down from full to half. 
And we got uh, Hades. He's uh, holding the fort back at the base. Waiting to buy some items here. And we got Screams getting that nice poke off with his poison. And here comes Hades back into lane. And Hades now has his ultimate. Along with Cupid. A Cupid laid over top of a Hades ult it is a pretty deadly. And you follow it out with the Al Kuang. And that's, that's just one nasty combo. So let's look at items here. Seraphin trying to starting to complete that rod of Aselpius, Aselpius which is a perfect item for hell. Uh, she does have a lot of cooldown reduction with her shoot of focus and a breastplate of valor. She does not have that breastplate completed. She only has it tier two, which is very interesting pickup. I would have completed that breastplate of valor to get the passive cooldown reduction, rather than uh, getting it to tier two and moving on to the next items and getting those items also at tier two. It looks like we also have Sarastro. I would have liked to see a little bit more magic protection coming out from him. But uh, kind of life on not a bad pickup. We got Screams popping his ult coming out from the side trying to get a gank on those uh, members of Red 5. And we also got a very nice ult by Sarastro following that up. And Velkar, he sneaks around back and pops his ult trying to capture all of the uh, the members of League of Gentlemen. I Let's go ahead and take a step back here, and I'm going to slow slow play that. And as soon as we initiate... So Scream's kind of making them believe that he's going over. Okay, he does go pick up that magic buff. And uh, so after he picks up that magic buff, he just kind of pops his ult and runs in here. And he gets the engage, the team of Red 5 disengaging. Did get the triple stun on that ult. He pops his three, dodging the ult from Al Kuang. However, Sarastro and Hell both get hit by that ultimate from Al Kuang. Good ult by Sarastro is healing all his allies, but the Velkar ult does pull Sarastro away and take him down. Hell does step into that ult as well, and I believe she's going to get picked out by the... Yep, Velkar popped his, uh, his three and is able to pick that up. Screams low health, not wanting to engage this... Uh, this Hades right here. He is just going to smartly back off. That was a well-timed, well-placed ult by Velkar. Kind of turned that team fight around. That could have gone very sour for the Red 5. Well played, sir. So Scream uh, is starting to get a little bit of lifesteal with uh, the Quinn, Quinn's Blades there, but doesn't have a lot of lifesteal right now. He does get some good poke. Ooh, I think he might have taken a tower hit there and get got hit by Hades. Uh, he's got to be really careful. If I were him, I'd probably just go back and play it safe. Hades doing a lot of damage, but also very tanky. Um, he's got the Wall of Absolution. Gives him some magic power and physical protection against that uh, Shibalonki pickup. But he's also got Hide of the Urchin. Very, very strong tanky item. Uh, I'm not sure about the Demonic Grip pickup. Uh, basically, that gives you some magic power and attack speed. Uh... I, you know, I could see that being a valid pickup. Ooh, Shibalanki going in for the engage on Al Kuang. And he is getting a lot of auto attack. But Cupid able to sneak around the corner and assist his teammate. And just pops the Shibalanki before Al Kuang is, it falls. So back to that demonic grip. Uh, Hades passive is he auto attacks something. When he auto attacks, he puts a, like a... Ooh, oh my gosh, Cupid doing a lot of damage. Gets a crit off on Sarastro. Heart Bomb, not enough to finish him off, however. So Hades, he applies a stack of something. I can't remember what it's called. And then he pops those stacks. So getting some uh, attack speed on him to apply more stacks quickly is not a bad thing. I, a little over, bit of an overextension of Sarastro. He just walked through the squall and gets Heart Bombed. Um, you really want to be careful going out into a lane uh, against... With that low of health against three full health uh, enemies. Screams trying to do the 1v3. Able to get a lot of poke off on Al Kuang before his teammates can react. And he does force Al Kuang to use the squall to try and poke Screams. So Al Kuang doesn't have it for the instant clear on the minions. Screams able to push those down. The squall coming out very well placed. Gets the dot on Screams. Able to poke him down, but that life steal from the Quinn's Blades able to pick him up a little bit further. The Al Kuang ult comes out um, really, really hard to land that Al Kuang ult when you got 
uh, a hunter that's building move speed. Um, would have liked to see him hold on to that a little longer. So Ruster building back his passive. He is going for more of a damage build than uh, a tanky. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Um, unfortunately, he's kind of... Hasn't had a chance to get a lot of gold to build out those items. And uh, when you look at Bantha Bolt and uh, Velkar and everyone on the Red 5 team, they've got a little bit of an item advantage on the uh, League of Gentlemen. So we got Hell and Zonkui holding the mid lane against three. Uh, looks like Screams is ready about to, to make a move. Let's go ahead and slow it down. He pops his ult. Gets the poison on Velkar. Really not the target that you want to single out in a team fight as a tank. And we get the stun from the uh, Fist of Gods from Sarastro. Hell getting a little bit overextended. In, takes a couple hits from the tower and the Velkar. Uh, Hades ult comes out, picking up a lot of damage. Followed by the Cupid ult. Just able to f just decimate that red, the League of Gentlemen team. Uh, like I was saying earlier, the Hades ult combined with the cupid ult is a lot of damage the cupid ult applies a cripple effect which makes it uh makes the other team not able to get out of the hades ult those combined so much damage coming out of that uh, red five team able to pick up those kills cupid does fall in the process however all right so they're able to get a lot of damage on that uh, tower that is going to be a tower in favor of red five and that is going to put their gold difference pretty far in uh, Red 5's favor. This is going to be a pretty hard deficit to come back from on the uh, League of Gentlemen's side. Al Kwong using his ult to pick up the blue buff there. Um, I'm not sure if that was wise. Al Kwong has been using his ult uh, um, almost randomly at times. And so when the uh, Hades does initiate with his ult, he doesn't have his ult to follow up. I would have liked to see him hold on that a little bit more. Um, so he's just clearing out that, that side jungle. He's going to pick up uh, mana buff damage and clear the uh, speed buff as well. Mid lane looking empty on the red 5 team. So a League of Gentlemen taking advantage of this and trying to get some poke on the tower. We do got two members of the red 5 team coming back to lane. To kind of control that poke. They're not really able to get very much damage on that tower. You can see it's still got quite a bit of health there. All right, Hades joining the fight here. We got Screams. He's he's kind of alone. Uh, his teammates are pretty far back behind him, but he's just out there getting that poke. We got Alquan going back. Let's see what he's gonna pick up. He really doesn't have very many items. He only has three items. Okay, he finishes a Book of Thoth. He's going as a stack item build, which really you. You don't want to build a stack item build this late in the game. Uh, you have to pop those items in early, build those stacks to really make them powerful. If you get them too late in the game, you're really not going to be able to get very many stacks on them. Uh, so that it's not going to be uh, too worth the gold that you spend on them. we got Scream coming around here. He's just checking out the jungle. You notice that all those buffs are clear. We've got Alquan clearing the uh, left side of the jungle now. Scream's kind of waiting to make a move here. Uh, he was going to pop his ult and gank, but decided against it. They don't have that tower as protection anymore. So if things go sour, they really have nowhere to escape. Alright, so we got Sarastro Soul here in the mid with... Oh, Hell does join him. And uh, they're just kind of holding back the pressure from the Red 5 team. And we got an initiation from Shibalanki on the left side. He pops his ult, does come out with the gank. They're so close to the tower, they're really not able to get a lot of damage on them. We got the Cupid ult, followed by the Alquang ult. Alquang ult, I believe, hit one person. The Hades ult, able to take down Hell. Cupid leaping forward to take down uh, Zonkui. Now Screams is trapped in between. He's trying to pick off the tank. Really not the target that you want to focus. I would have definitely focused the, uh, the Alquang ult over the, the tank, but his he was critting so hard on the tank, he just decided to try and finish it out. He ended up uh, being a Dia side in favor of Red 5. Leo, a gentleman's Phoenix now, getting poked down by Cupid's auto attacks. 
They're probably going to get that Phoenix. They do get that Phoenix as the uh, team of League of Gentlemen does respawn. And they're going to back off smartly and go back to base and pick up some items. So now we uh, we got the men are taking minimal damage from the, the minions here. And uh, now, really, if the League of Gentlemen have any hope of coming back into this game, they're going to have to really turtle and play defense and kind of catch up on the items. If you look at the items, so, so Rosper has only got uh, four of his six items completed, where if you look on the other team of Red 5, they almost got, they almost all have full builds. And they're really going for a sustained build with their abilities. They go uh, Tier 3 Meditation and uh, Tier 3 Restoration Shard. Really interesting uh, ability pickups. But there really isn't a lot of CC on the, the side of uh, the League of Gentlemen, so they don't really have to build any beads or uh, Aegis or anything like that. So maybe that's not a bad thing. Kind of counteracts the sustainability that Hell brings to her team. It looks like we might have an engage here. We have the ultimate coming off from Cupid. Alkong ult, it does tip uh, Sarastra right there. It doesn't hit anyone else. So not a lot of accomplished there from those two ultimates spent by the Red 5 team. Now Shibalanki is starting to hit really hard. But uh, if he's able to be taken down before he's able to get those basic attacks off, he won't be able to accomplish much. Velkar initiating. Look for the ultimate right here. He does pull off the ult. Only gets one uh, member of... The League of Gentlemen, he pops his ult to get that CC immunity to get out of the ultimate, but he is still unable to get out. Cupid, uh, looks like Cupid picking him up. The squall damage coming out on the team of League of Gentlemen. They have to retreat back to the base to heal up and have any hope of defending this Minotaur. Looks like we might have an engage here. The squall coming down on the Minotaur and also Seraphim getting hit by that. That dot damage is so strong. They really need to start uh, thinking about building some... Uh, Magical protections here. Uh, she does have Hide of Leviathan, and uh, again, she don't, she has two, three of her items are only tier two, so she's not getting that passive benefit from those items. But uh, it is a learning process. Minotaur are almost about half. That Squall getting on to two members of the uh, League of Gentlemen's team screams going forward, trying to get pick up that uh, Alquang poke. Now, uh, Minotaur of League of Gentlemen is sitting below half. They might be able to pick this up with the next minion wave. Screams poking out. Trying to take down those minions to defend the Minotaur. He is going to try and take down Pink. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the poison on. Felkar taking so much crit damage. Screams in the late game Shibalanki damage. Just crazily picking up those two kills. The Phoenix does respawn as well. Are they going to be able to defend it against that single creep? Ooh, the single minion able to take down the Phoenix. Unfortunate for the League of Gentlemen. That might have been their hope at coming back. Now the gold difference we're looking at is 6,000 in favor of Red 5. That's really not a whole lot considering how far ahead they are on kills. But the, their experience is 6,000 in favor of Red 5 as well. Now if you look at uh, Bantha Bolt on Cupid, he's sitting at level 18. Scream's also level 17, so really not that far ahead. Really, it's uh, Seraphine and Sirostro that are kind of uh, falling behind a little bit of the Red 5 team. But they've just been pinned so hard this, this whole game that they haven't been able to recover from that. Nice poke coming out from the Sirostro uh, dot damage. They are able to push it back up to the tower. We get a little bit of poke. They have to be careful here. The engage coming out from Cupid. The ult doing so much damage. And his basic attacks picking up the kill on screams. They better get out of here. They should not stay and fight that. Oh, it's a DSI picked up. Uh, the full team of League of Gentlemen is down for another 30 seconds. This is definitely going to be uh, a Minotaur pickup and game. Um, good game both Red 5 and League of Gentlemen. And I'll see you guys on game two. Uh, we'll wait. Uh, let's see if I can pull up the stats here for you. Hmm. Looks like I do get the stats. So let's see here. 
uh, Velcar on Hades going 5-1-12. We got Pink on Alquang 5-3-14. Banthabolt doing such a great job on Cupid with those ultimates. He is sitting at 11 kills, 4 deaths, 10 assists. We look over at the League of Gentlemen. Uh, we got Sorostral 0-8-5. Screams 7-6-1. Doing a really good job at trying to uh, counteract some of that damage coming out of the Red 5. And Seraphine at 176. She does have 4,000 healing, so that was a great benefit to her team. And uh, the player damage coming out of Screams on Shibalanki was was the highest in the game out of all the gods. But uh, there was two gods on the Red 5 team that were above 20,000. And just that damage output coming from them was enough to carry them to victory. And uh, let's go ahead and step to game two.